y'all, what's going on? Daniel Robertson, Breaking Barriers Podcast. Here we are, season five. Super excited about today's episode. We got a very, very special guest, a legend right here in the city of, city of <laughs> Buffalo, Mr. Dennis Wilson Jr. <laughs> um, but before we get to him, got to introduce uh, our young brothers from the Breaking Barriers uh, Youth Leadership Council. We got Xavier Lamar. Hello, hello. Joseph Brown. Hello, hello. And hey, Dorian hello. will be on with us in a little bit. Um, but, you know, we're all party. Probably very heartbroken after that loss we took yesterday um, at the hands of Kansas City. So, um, Dennis, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, thank you, thank um, you, thank you. I know you're a big sports fan. Um, just your thoughts on yesterday and our season and what we got to do to get past KC. It was crushing, man. Like, you know, like, I felt like we missed a golden opportunity. Like, I felt like if we win this game, we was we was really in the driver's seat to win it, win, win it all, which – Ironically, where we at, I remember last time we was in the playoffs, I was at the bus stop. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so, <laughs> going to Turner Carroll. So um, it's just, man, it's, it's, it, it was hurtful. Like, it was heart, heartbreaking, you know what I mean? You know, we fanatics, man. We go to the games. We on the road, man. We do the trips, man. You know, when they went to London, I went to London, man. Like, so it's, you know. I felt like I was playing. Like, I, it really felt like we was out there. Like, you know, I don't know what your worst loss in the, in your career when you played, but to me, that was one of the worst loss I had in my athletic career. And I'm like, damn, I ain't even an athlete no more. <laughs> <laughs> man, I feel you on that one, man. Like, last night I'm watching the game. Like, I, I legit had tears in my eyes. Like, mm -hmm. diehard Bills fan, 90, I remember watching Norwood miss that kick. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just, it's hard to come back from. Two years in a row to the same opponent. Yet the you know the 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 game wasn't as big. It wasn't the AFC Championship game. It was the game to get there, but it's still that team that we got to get by. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. How about you guys? I know Xavier. I know you're a big Bills fan. Funny, this is my first year Bills fan, and it was, and just going to the game with you, taking on the Jets. That was a very fun experience, and like. Then they come and beat the Pats. Well, I wouldn't say beat on the Pats in the wild card. That was just a crazy moment. You know, honestly, we literally had that. We literally lost that just because of a coin toss. That's really what it all came down to. But all, all you can say is next season, to be honest. Hopefully, Tredavious White come back, get a good defense, because 13 seconds, that ain't going to lie, that, that low-key hurt me. I remember I was – it's funny, my friend Tim called me. We were throwing a wreck on the phone. We was like, we're going to the Super Bowl. Oh, my God. The Super Bowl is right there in our hands. And then those the clock starts at zero, and it's overtime. I'm like, but it is what it is, though. So I'm, I'm feeling more positive now after it. You know, I was hurt. Oh, especially, uh, important thing to mention, turned 18 yesterday. <laughs> so Happy birthday, bro. Thank you, thank you. That would have been a special moment for my 18th birthday. But Yeah, that's crazy. Maybe next year. But I wouldn't lie to I'm not really a big sports fan, but I did bet against the Bills, though. You know what? You got to go. For my <laughs> mans and my job, and I won. So that's a cool little dub. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. So enough Bills talk. Without further ado, Dennis, like I said, we're happy to have you here. Um, I know about all the wonderful accolades and things that you've achieved over all these years. Um, we'd love for you to, the young man to kind of jump into the conversation and just get us going with you. All right, let's get it, man. All right, so let's start from the very beginning. So what was your life like growing up uh, as a child? Um, it was pretty cool. Uh, I'm coming from a big family as far as, like, my grandmother had 10 kids. Um, so I had a lot of cousins. So we kind of grew up together. So um, definitely a lot of love. Um, we weren't in poverty, but we weren't, like, Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I guess you can say lower middle class, mm -hmm. um, borderline poor, if you want to call it that. But, you know, um, so, you know, it, it was definitely some struggles, you know, as far as financially and, you know, just uh, trying to break these generation generational curses of, you know, being successful and so on and so forth. So and learning a lot of different things. Um, so um, a good childhood. But, you know, it's now just trying to build upon it. And so that's where we're at now. You were born and raised in Buffalo? Yes, sir. Right around the corner. <laughs> oh, right around the, so east side. Yep, Cold Spring, USA. Oh, okay. <laughs> how do you feel like that? Like, like how do you feel like that impacted you growing up, you know that? Well, the funny thing is I was born in Cold Spring, but then my, we moved a lot. So, and that's one of the things um, 
when you come from the low income, sometimes you're moving too much. You know, it's, too, right. it's a lot of change and transition. And so yeah. that was one of the things that I had to go through. And I didn't even know I went through it because um, you're just going through it when you're young. Um, right. So um, I got a chance to live in a lot of different neighborhoods. So mm-hmm. I got a chance to meet a lot of different people and um, kind of just go through that process. So um, I'm Buffalo, so that's why it hurts so bad the Bills lost. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. I, I, you know, I like to say I was born and raised um, – Cold Spring. I, I was born in Cold Spring. My business is in Cold Spring. I went to college in Cold Spring. So, you know, I mean, pretty much I was, I, I'm here in this, you know, so I, I bleed it. So, like, businesses, right? Mm-hmm. You have, can you tell the people who are mm-hmm. listening what you have going on in terms of businesses? All right. So, uh, a lot of people know that I own the Oak Room restaurant, which is right around the corner. Uh, we've been closed okay. since the beginning of COVID. Uh, this last variant, well, I ain't gonna say the last variant because we don't know, but yeah. this variant <laughs> seemed like it's starting to die down a little bit. So yeah. hopefully, um, yeah. in the next month or two, we'll get back open um, and, and get back to full steam. So the, I own the Oakland restaurant. Um, for the last 20 plus years, I've been doing graphics. So I'm a graphic designer. Uh, I own a graphic design company. It used to be King of Spade Graphics, but now it's um, Mr. D. Wilson Limited Corporation. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and, and part of that, uh, I combined all my businesses under one corporation. So yeah. uh, I'm a party promoter, event promoter. Um, so I am one of the best. <laughs> all white and black. All, all yeah, white parties, yeah, all black that. parties, undefeated. <laughs> yeah, so, um, and that all grew out of graphic design. Um, I own a, gra- uh, a magazine, me and my wife, Panoramic Magazine, mm-hmm. where we document the lives of um, – Middle class, well, urban professionals. I ain't gonna say middle class because they all over. Urban mm-hmm. professionals, with uh, either from Buffalo or with Buffalo roots. Mm. Uh, we want to basically tell stories and tell how people achieved and got to where they at. A lot of times, people don't think that um, somebody else did it, or they don't think people went going through the same thing you're going through. And so, I want to be able to tell those stories so people to see that, oh, okay, he went through that, he got through that, I can get through that too. Right. So, just motivation. How how are you staying so humble through this though? Cause you you listen to this like this is just average stuff. The white party is crazy in Buffalo. <laughs> Oak Room mad lit in Buffalo. Like you just listen to this like it's just regular things happening. You feel me? Like not everybody is around with this many people watching them in their spaces. Uh, I mean, I just grew into it. You know, I played ball just like uh, Daniel here. Um, I played in college, so you know, I went to Turner. So at Turner, you know, in high school, our games was popping. So we was the thing. So you know, I kind of grew up in that culture of and then I went to Kinesis and I was part of the group that when they first opened the Key Bank Arena I don't know what his name now it's still Key Bank I don't know what the arena is but when they first opened it it was it was popping you know what I mean yeah. so I was part of that group even though I was a walk on and I ain't played much in college you know what I mean but somehow my picture got on the wall for a while <laughs> so you made a roster <laughs> yeah everybody yeah. can't say they played college ball yeah mm-hmm. yep yeah. so um you know and that's just part of my upbringing too my mom very humble um, she's very laid back. My father's, uh, very laid back, cool. Um, and so, you know, you take on your parents, um, characteristics and that's my characteristics. I'm laid back. Um, I remember, uh, coach Beeline at, uh, well then at Kenesha, he was saying, never get too high, never get too low. Him and coach Mac, never get too high, never get too low. You know, as soon as you think everything going well, 13 seconds happen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? As <laughs> soon as they like, oh man, man, everybody got to blow up everything. We were 13 seconds away from going to the next round. So you can't blow everything up. So mm-hmm. you got to try to b- maintain that balance in life. And that's pretty much everything. So I'm curious to know, because I read, is it true that you graduated at the top of your class, right? So Sort of at the top. I wasn't number one, but I was right. up there top five. All right. That's mm-hmm. good. But still, like, like even like the like the environment that we come from, it's difficult to maintain that like being on the like getting your studies done, knocking them out while still having to like just go through life, especially mm-hmm. east side of Buffalo, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like, how'd you get it done? I was smart. Like, I'm not gonna sit here and say that I wasn't blessed in that vibe. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. my mom had me reading at an early age, mm-hmm. so. I was really sharp for of school. I had, you know, a good formula of how I did things, and it, it worked for me um, until I got to college. And then you get, you know, you get the crash course when you're an African American going to a um, Caucasian institution. It's a whole different ball game. So I had to relearn. Um, but all the way to uh, high school, and pretty much, I was able to kind of navigate. And honestly, for the most part, I went to public school. Public school is not hard. So <laughs> you know, what I mean, mm-hmm. we make things more difficult than it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Um, I didn't have any problems with that. You know, it was just, uh, I, you know, it was just, I was responsible. And then too, I'm, I'm, I was never 
one of those people who, because he has something or he has a lot, I wasn't jealous of that. So it didn't matter. Like, you know, I was into my thing. I want to play ball. I was into my thing. You know, you got some guys who, you know, they had a lot of money in their pocket, drug dealers and stuff. I didn't want to sell drugs. That just wasn't my thing. I'm scared of getting shot. You know what I mean? Like, so, you know what I mean? I was comfortable with who I was. I still had to develop who I was, but I was comfortable being me. And I'm and right. to this day, like, I'm not chasing nobody else. You know what I mean? It's just like, okay, I'm in my own lane. And if I see somebody who inspired me, I just take that inspiration and, and kind of use it to try to do better. But I'm happy for them people as opposed to being jealous or spiteful. And I think that's what hurts a lot of people where they're getting jealous of other people. I'd agree yeah. with that one. Um, early, so earlier you mentioned balance, mm-hmm. and um, being a person who, as you mentioned, promotes party, promotes, runs the oak room, teacher, your husband, mm-hmm. your father. How do you balance all of your your passions? Because I think you're passionate about everything that you do. <laughs> yeah. um, how do you balance those things? Because each one of those roles, those hats that you wear, is super super important. It was a learning process. So um, I coached at Middle College for a while with Randy Rich. Um, and um, during that time, I was running the old groom, and I was wearing myself then. And so I, I had to give up something. And so for pretty much from college until in my middle 30s, I was doing too much. And I had to figure out, okay, something you got to give up something. You can't do everything. And I think sometimes we try to right. do everything well. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh, oh, my friend, uh, who's like my mentor and my boy, Beefer, used to tell me, master one thing. Once you master that and you do well with it, then you can take something else to learn. And a lot of times we don't master that one thing. We just try to get go to the next thing. And a lot of times it's fads for people because somebody else is doing it. So I just try to now make sure that I don't do too much. And now I'm at a point, too, and I'm in a good situation financially where I don't have to do things. So I could say, no, nah, I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? So and that's that kind of – and you have to reach that point, too. So mm-hmm. just kind of getting that balance and saying, you know, okay, it's okay if I miss this event. It's okay yeah. if I don't go to this thing or I ain't seen here or this person doesn't know me. Okay, you know what I mean? Like you got to be okay with yourself and comfortable. Um, and if you do your thing, then you'll be comfortable if you, you know, confident in what you got going on. Yeah, yeah it's crazy that you said like you went to Turner. That's mm-hmm. where my mom went. Your mom? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, okay. That's where I, But um, so like you were talking about earlier like the stuff you were doing and stuff and like that and like being a teacher. Mm-hmm. So like, what made you go into education after doing school for so long? That was luck. <laughs> and um, if you'd have told me I was going to be a teacher, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought that. Um, coming out of high school, I wanted to be on a sports guy. I wanted to be a sports, uh, sports center. You know, uh, Jumanji, oh. like, you know, uh, uh, Stuart, Stuart Scott. Scott. Yep, 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 yep. Or uh, I forgot the other guy's name. So we used to sit up and watch Sports Center all the time. And I wanted to be one of those sportscasters. So I went to school for communications. And then I realized that you really need to be, like, really into English, the language yeah. and the classes and the writing. And I wasn't into that. I didn't like it at all, the journalism part. Uh-huh. Um, I thought you just get the sports report and you start, you know, going crazy. Mm-hmm. Nah, it's a lot of research and a lot of stuff mm-hmm. are going. I wasn't into that part. So um, I wanted to play ball in college. Um, I graduated with my communication degree. I didn't want to work for the news station, uh, which my coach was going to set up for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I was starting the graphics. So um, I, I wound up going to grad school. I remember calling Kenesha's. I School had started back in August. I was working security. I, I got a bachelor's degree. I'm working security, a little flashlight cop. And I'm like, <laughs> this. Right. we was rapping. We was doing music. And I'm just like, this This ain't it. This ain't it. So I called right. the school. and like, yo, can I go to school? And they was like, did you take the GRE, I think it was? I'm like, no. Well, did you do this? I'm like, no. But I played basketball or something. But So right. this is where connections really who you know and, yeah, and, right. and what you, you know, and being a nice person, a good pe- person. So they like, come on down. So you can take business. They have business or uh, education. So I'm like, I want to own my business. We doing this music thing, entertainment company. Right. I want to do business. So then I go into the bookstore to look at the books for the business, and they was real expensive. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> this education might not be too bad. <laughs> and I had liked, I, I had a history professor, Dr. Banchek, who was my favorite professor. So I kept taking his classes because I liked him. So I had wound up building up a history minor. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he had this right. charismaticness to him. You know, like, yeah, the king had 30 wives. Like, you know, you should have wives. So, you know, that <laughs> stuff entertained me. So I was like, okay, cool. So I wind up following history. And so um, I, my, my grandparents knew the director of social studies to the board of education. So I called him, like, you know, hook me up. Give me a job. 
He like, no, you gotta go sub. So I was in grad school. I subbed. I was working security. I was coaching at Turner. So you know me, and then I subbed for a couple of years until I finally got everything, my paperwork and everything, my passed the test and everything. And then I went to teach. And you know, from there, you know, once you you in the system, you you know, you start rolling. Can't say I loved it, but now I love it. What did you so, teach? History. So I taught every history from seventh to twelve. So oh, I wow. taught seventh, eighth. Um, global nine, global 10, U.S. history, economics, government, and now I'm a graphic design and print teacher. What's your favorite part about being a teacher? Um, now that I'm a graphic design and print teacher, it's the fact that I design <laughs> all the time and I can get creative. Right. Um, history to me, even though I like history because it repeats itself, mm -hmm. as we've seen last night, uh, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, yeah. um, history is cool, but it was like the kids don't want to learn it half the time. Yeah. And so uh, trying to force somebody to do something they really don't want to do is is aggravating. And, too, they put a, it's a lot of pressure from downtown and oh, yeah. stuff that you just, you know, the students don't see, but we get that. The, mm -hmm. the key, teachers get the short end of the stick, man. Mm -hmm. So, But now as a graphic design teacher, I can help kids start their own business. I can show them different ways. I can show them, you know, like today. So, what's, so like, what's your experience had been, your experience been like engaging, like, with students, like, like, what was that connection like, like, through your time as a teacher? I always had good relationships with my students because I was firm, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. At the same time, like, I'm laid back. You don't see me. You know I me. Mean? You ain't ever seen me really bent out of shape. I don't scream. I'm not a yeller. I'm not uh, out here trying to get all this attention. You know, it's right. like you said, I'm laid yeah. back. So I, I use that same type of thing in the classroom. I'm also firm, though, like, you know, my grandmother had a lot of kids. So, you know, when she looked at you, you knew what was up. And so I developed that look, too, you know what I mean? So when stu kids know, like, yo, and not from the hood, too. Like, yo, listen, man, we ain't going to do this, you know what I mean? So um, for the most part, man, the respect has been there. Um, I, I have been able to uh, maintain relationships with some of my students. Um, I've been able to hire some of my students um, that work with me now because they're obviously old. <laughs> um, and, and so it, it's been, to me, it's a blessing because, you know, as you when you do business, every three months, six months, the people who come in your business change, and they swap out. And those people don't come no more. You get a new group. And eventually, as you said, you just turn 18. So in a couple of years, you're probably going to be coming to the white party. You know what I mean? And, you know, you, you might not be ready now, but, you know, you'll be ready in 10 years. You know, it'd be, you know, something. So, you know, and to me, those relationships mean everything. I don't want people to come into my party like, oh, that's my teacher. I want them to become, that's my, you know, my mentor or, you know, my friend. And, you know, if you need something, call me. I got you. So, like... I was considering going to college to be a teacher, right? What would you, what would you, what's some advice you would give to me about that? Um, I would say, first of all, what subject are you interested in? Right. I was going to say probably English or like, yeah, I probably would teach English. You like to read? <laughs> I like to. Depends on what it is. I like to write more. <laughs> like I, to like write? To write. I like to write more too okay. than read, honestly. I like I'm, to write so more. Being but, a teacher is great, or like, or like history and stuff like you did. It, it's it's a it's a good profession. I mean, uh, will you get rich? No, but <laughs> one thing it allows you to do is do so many different other things. So I'm Weird. off every weekend, every holiday, summer, summers. <laughs> so you have a ton of time to do other things. So you don't, you know what I mean. So right. what I tell my students all the time, like, I have a full time career as a graphic designer graphic design company, a print company, a minority certified. I get print contracts. That's real. I'm still a teacher. So, you know, I, I still have my pension. I still have my salary. You know what I mean? So I'm getting the best of both worlds. And you can have that, especially as a teacher, because you have that that, that free, free time. time yeah. You know what I mean? It's just how you manage it and juggle it and you, how you use your money. The uh, your, your degrees and stuff usually don't kick in right away. And you probably, say, you know, attest to this. Yeah. It seemed like, you know, once you get, five, ten years into your career, that's when it seems the money start to start making sense. Right. You know what I mean? Or so you go or when you go back and get another degree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's it takes a while for everything. I think uh this microwave society, the social media makes everything look like it happens overnight, but it's a long process and right. um you can see it. You eighteen, but five years ago you was thirteen. You're a different person than when you were 13, yeah. am I correct? Absolutely. <laughs> and, and I try to way, remind students this different. all the time. You're going to change, and you got to be able to embrace the change and be yeah. ready for it. So Absolutely. Uh, so you mentioned overnight success, right? 
So I've known you for a long time now. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know me since I was in high school, mm-hmm. honestly. Um, and I've seen you just grow and just the transformation, transition happen over all these years. Um, like, how do you continue to come back year after year with the same energy um, that you put into events and the graphic designs and everything else that you do? Because um, some people, they'll get to a point where, all right, I done made it now. I can just kind of coast. and coast. You know, people going to come because they always enjoy themselves at these events or when I do this or do that. Because every year, all black, all, all white party, all black party, you always add in something, something different. Else, or add something different. So where does that drive and that energy come from? I travel. Um, I watch other people because, you know, people say, oh, this is Buffalo. And I don't feel like that. Um, I feel like we should have everything that a big city should have. So what I try to do is I'll go and incorporate something I see from somewhere else or something I like. So that's what's up. Um, mm-hmm. We went to uh, D.C. Um, and <laughs> funny because it was the first time we went on the private jet. We went for my wife's birthday. We did the private jet. <laughs> so part of the weekend we went to brunch. Uh, the brunch was popping, uh, and you know they had to the, uh, open everything. You know the open bar, the mosas, and all that, and the food right. and everything. And we was like, man. Me and Kurt were sitting there like, man. We watching how they operating now, how they serving the food, how they uh, do the emissions in the door. We're like, okay, we're going to try to incorporate this when we go back to Buffalo. And we tried to incorporate the Oakland for a while, but, you know, obviously D.C. prices are different than Buffalo prices, so you have to tone it down. And we did it for a while, and, we, you know, it's something that we still can come back to when we work out the kinks or whatever. But stuff like that where you go somewhere and you see ideas and you, you try to bring it back and implement it. And so now with the parties – I, I built it up to a point where I don't have to worry about people coming anymore. So now I can work on the the experience, right. you know, and I can incorporate new things because I don't, I'm not worried about making the money, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Cause I'll make the money. So now I can spend a little bit extra to do some things that you just want to try to try to do different, you know? So, and I want to see different things. I don't want to go to the same thing all the time. And, mm-hmm. you know, and you know, our society, man, if it ain't, you know, three three years, it ain't hot no more. You know what I mean? So I try not to make be a fad, you know. So um, and you've had a run with these. I mean, mm-hmm. I remember, I mean, I didn't go to the first one, but I remember seeing the flyers for it. The first one that was, what, Enterprises on? Yeah, 550 Genesee. Genesee. Yep, yeah, yep, like, yep. and now you're in Miami doing that. So Man, listen, <laughs> I didn't know, you know. And that's, I, what, I can't, that's really what's up, though. You know, I can't Miami. say that I, that's how I planned it, but it kind of, as I said, it grew over time, and then as it's grown, like I went to Toronto. It's a guy in Toronto who do it. He's been doing it 20 years. Um, he has 20-year anniversary, maybe like four years ago. So and he a millionaire doing it. That's so it's like, right. okay, that's my inspiration because I didn't, you know, be, you got to see somebody do it first, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Once you see somebody right. do it or you set a goal, then you can attack that goal. So, you know, now I got different goals. You know, before my goal was just to have 400 people. Then it turned into, dang, okay, I can get 700 Man, I just want to get a thousand. And now I'm like, okay, I hit. You know what I mean? Once you keep hitting those goals, you gotta yeah. you, you set a different goal, and you know it might not be the number of people, but it may be something else. You know what I mean? So yeah. you got people coming in from different cities. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so that that happened. You know, I remember uh, Ray Kwan from Wu Tang was at one of the, the parties. He's like, "Yo, Ray Kwan gonna come." Talk. Okay, oh, okay. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, you know, I'm not a, a celebrity person, but even though he's a real cool dude. And he hangs with some guys from, you know, he cool, real cool with some Buffalo people. But, you know, just to have that vibe, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Have a place where somebody could come and hang out, you know what I mean? That's pretty sweet to me, man. But, like, with you saying all that, what space do you feel like you're in your career right now? Like, do you feel like you made it or no? Um, I'm I'm comfortable, but at the same time, I, I got some goals. I had a good meeting yesterday with a friend, and we're working on some different projects, and he's um, he has experience that I don't have experience in. So, I, you know, now it's just, you know, you, you try different challenges. Now I'm at a point where um, I think I got 10 years before I can retire from, as a teacher. Mm-hmm. So right. I'm at a point where, okay, I got 10 years to try, you know, do everything I want to do. And then after that, you know, I can retire and just relax or I can still try to do whatever, you know what I mean? I'm just at a point now where I want to do the things that I would like to do. Right. You know, um, home is good. You know, I got a great relationship with my wife. Uh, my wife is very ambitious. So, you know, it's it's important to having good people around you. Mm-hmm. You need people right. that drives you. So we drive each other. We push each other. You know what I mean? So that's extremely important. Kurt at the Oak Room. Kurt is a mind. Like, so we out he would go out of town, and he'd be sending me texts in the middle of the night, so he don't forget who he met or what he learned. Mm-hmm. And he sent the text to me 
for his note, not for me per se, but it's just like you need those people to push you. And then um, it's some, a lot of guys around here that I watch and, you know, you see what they do and you, you get energized. You're like, okay, you know what I mean? I don't do that, you know what I mean? But uh, Deuce King, Deuce and A.K. Reed, when they came out with Conflicted, the right. movie, mm -hmm. I'm watching the movie and these are all the guys I know and I'm like, wow, man, this is dope. They killing it. And I'm like, okay. I gotta, I gotta get back on my. I gotta get out here, and you know, right. I mean, I'm not doing movies. That's not my thing. It I'm just inspires a, you to yeah, grind yep, more in your yep, own field. Yep, in my own that's, lane. So now, that's how it to is me, for me, I hold up I my end. You. you know, he holding up his end, helping our city and bringing people. So now I gotta hold up my end. Yeah. So when I do my events, I need to make sure um, it's spotlight small businesses. You need to spotlight, spotlight yeah. the models, the artists that singing. You know, you need to spotlight businesses. You need to connect people from out of town. My man, Chad, from Detroit. I need to connect him with um, Kurt or somebody else, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Connecting these people, you know, and, and different stuff while people partying. Mm. <laughs> Real so, quick. I'm sorry, X. I'll just jump in because I want to yeah. uh, make sure we get Dorian in here too. All right. I'm going to ask this and then I'm going to slide out. And this yeah. is actually more of a question for y'all because I want him to give y'all some insight real quick. Um, Dennis, I know you travel a lot mm -hmm. and you go out to eat a lot and you go to all these different places that um, people that look like us don't always get a chance to actually go to and experience. That came from college basketball. <laughs> well, yeah. That's so, where it came from. Yeah, because you get to travel a lot playing mm -hmm. ball and yeah. that's one of, one of the advantages of being an athlete in school, right? Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things I always try to press upon young people is just get outside of Buffalo because mm -hmm. it's going to give you a different worldview and lens. So just talk to them a little bit about um, you know, the importance of just seeing stuff outside of Buffalo and having just different experiences, even if it's within your own city. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I encourage my students, and I even create assignments where they have to create travel brochures or travel mm -hmm. trips, um, whether it's uh, resorts. I remember we, we went to Cancun in, um, a couple of years ago. And yeah, sure. oh, we you to as a teacher took your students to Cancun. No, no, no. Oh, no, no I, I was take about to say. I'm talking about my, my wife, my brother. <laughs> we in Cancun. Not <laughs> school related. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. school oh, related. Wow. We in Cancun, though, but we went out. And we in this nightclub, and it's like a stadium. Mm -hmm. It's like probably six, 7,000 people. And I'm just like, we, at that time, probably, I was probably in my early 40s, maybe, maybe late 30s. I'm just like, this is sweet, but for 19 year olds. <laughs> so when I got back to school, I'm telling my students, listen, you have to go to these things because it's for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I want my daughter to go so they can experience it because we, we missed that. You know, we missed those trips and all that stuff. So I encourage the students because once you get out there, you're going to meet a girl. Now you friends, you know what I mean? I might be lifelong friends. You might not even talk to her ever again, but you might, you know, social media, you can connect with everybody. But now you have a friend somewhere else in another city. Go visit that person. Now you see... You get exposed to the different things in that city. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I remember doing something. Uh, I did a graphic design. I did a uh, CD cover. This guy had just signed to a record label, a um, friend out in L.A., and um, he was a crip, and yeah. I don't know nothing about the gangs. <laughs> so when he sent me the design, I had to call him like, okay, I know it's some rules to this. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> Give me the rules before I design, because the last thing I want to do is put some red in this thing. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And so, you know, <laughs> you need to go places, whether it's good or bad, you need to be exposed to see the different things so you understand the cultures and so on and so forth. Who was um, the artist? His name was Cass, and um, he had just got signed, and then he wound up getting, uh, I think he was in a car accident and got killed. Mm -hmm. He was actually, my daughter's mother is her cousin's. So, um, and I think he had just That's got signed. I don't know if it was death row. It was something very big. Um, and, you know, that happened. Mm. All right. So I want you to tell me about, like, your experiences, like, with uh, networking with all these small businesses. So what is it like? Like, what type of ideas you get? Like, So um, being a graphic designer, you get a chance. To, you get exposed to a lot of people's mm. businesses. Um one of the things that I did when I first started doing graphics is uh, I had, this is back before social media, so I had printed out all my stuff and made a little photo book, and I would go to the clubs and say, you know, can I do your graphics? And so Sensations, which was our main nightclub, probably our best nightclub we ever had, um, he hired me. He said, cool. So I would get a chance to be in the back room and hear a lot of different things. Um, it was a couple – uh, club downtown, same thing. I'd be in the back room hearing things. And so then you, you over the time, over the years, you get all walks of life, hairdressers, um, barbershops, uh, daycares. And you get, you, you accumulate that information. So you get a, just a little knowledge base on how people should do. And then obviously my job is to make the look 
and make it look better, whether it's logos and all that stuff. So um, you network by just being available. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, once you get known to do something well, people are going to fi- find you and they're going to call you when they need you. And if you're there for them and you get the things done, then you become that resource. Everybody want to say, oh, my man do that. Right. Everybody. That's a fact. You know what I mean? Oh, that's my man. <laughs> and so that's, that's how it kind of be. And that's how the network came. And then, you know, I played ball. So you got your network from basketball. We did music. We was rap for a while. So I had my network through that. And then being a graphic designer. So, and then I'm obviously a business owner. So, you know, you, that's why it's important to be a good person mm-hmm. um, because at any time, any of those can go the other way, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, got, I got a couple questions. So, like, you was, what, you was rapping at the time? Yeah, so, so uh, what, in how college. Was going? Actually, it was pretty good, man. I just think we was a little ahead of our time. And then, too, like, what? one of the things that I didn't want to do, I, I'm not a street person. I'm not a, I'm a hustler, but I'm not a hustler in that form. Like, right. I'm not out here hustling, selling drugs. I'm not here with the the beefing with this person and that person. So, and to me, a lot of the music or a lot of the crews kind of start going toward that. And that's just what it means. And that's one one of the reasons why I had to exit out of that. Um, And then too, you know, obviously it's something that you need capital, you need money. And so I was broke, (laughs) you know what I mean? So, (laughs) you know, just, it it, it was just tough. So, and then once I started teaching, I started having like the moral conflict, you know what I mean? So you at you at school and you see the kids listening to music and it's influencing them and it's not good and I'm just like I don't really want to be a part of that. Don't get me wrong, like I want to listen to it, but I was cool <laughs> enough to listen to NWA and all that stuff right. and not believe that I was, yeah, you know NWA. You know <laughs> right. what I mean? I understood it, you know, and it was good music and I just left it at that. But I didn't. I it didn't influence me where I wanted to be that. But I w- literally watch kids want to be Tupac. Yeah, that's crazy. You know what I mean? You you hear the references of Tony Montana a lot from uh, Scarface. Mm-hmm. I don't want to die. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's my thing. Like, you know, and a lot of times <laughs> you watch these movies, these guys run be three or four years. So I mm-hmm. ask my students, do you want to have three or four years where you live great? Or do you want to live 70? What, 50 of them good? Great. I'd rather live 50 years, have a great time. Right. So, I feel you, and then, man. too, like, literally, it's funny, all the hustlers in my neighborhood, everything they did, I didn't did. Everything they got, I mean, don't get me wrong, they probably did it to ex- an excessive amount because they had more money. But my wife is beautiful. <laughs> like, right. you know what I mean? She's stunning. So I ain't got to worry. We go somewhere I feel comfortable. Right. Got a beautiful car, beautiful house. I travel. You got everywhere. money. You got money. You know what I mean? I play ball. I got a chance to do everything that you would want to do, I did. And right. you can do it without having to put your life in jeopardy or your family life in jeopardy. So, yeah. so like, I'm not going to ask too many, like, just back to back. But, like, mm-hmm. what inspires your grind? Because, like, you you could have chilled at one or two things mm-hmm. and you just adding stuff and doing it all at the same time. Like, what is making, what are you working this hard for? I don't know. I can't really answer that one, man. It's just like, you know, something that's in you to, to achieve. You get you get an idea, you get a dream, and you be like, man, I can do it. You know what I mean? And then now I'm at a point where, like, when I plan something, it actually works. You know, for right. a long time, man, when you, especially when you don't have the resources, you have a dream, and you start to work on it, but it don't work out right, and you get right. frustrated. But I kept working at it, and now I'm at a point in my life where, when I really plan something to execute it, it works. Mm-hmm. And to me, that's addicting. You know what I mean? It's just like, yes. man, okay. You know, I know if I put, I know if I put five, six months into an event, that event going to do super well. You know what I mean? As long mm-hmm. as it's something I want to do. Yeah, yeah. It's so funny that you said that because I said 2022 is the year of execution. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. All right, so we're going to kick it off to Dorian, who just hopped on with us. Anything you got for him? I want that hoodie. <laughs> yeah, you make your own clothes yeah I did I forgot about that I do. Got, I started a clothing line during the pandemic so everything shut down during the pandemic mm-hmm. and um, so you got to reinvent yourself so right. during the pand- pandemic um, one of the things I started doing is uh, and I'm around people who invest so I started investing more um, right. stocks and stuff so I started learning that a little bit more learn you know where I, I'm not a hustler or a crazy a gambler like that so had to learn my tolerance and what I want to do and right. um, another thing I created was a clothing line it was supposed to be just some t-shirts to sell at the white party um, 
that was yeah. what the, the plan was. But once everything got shut down, I put out a little um, hoodie or a T-shirt, and it did okay. And then my daughter was – she started her business during the pandemic. Right. So – now I'm competing with my daughter, kind of like, you know, where she's doing her thing. She lives in Charlotte. Not competing with her, but it's like, okay, like, you know, I inspire her or she inspired me too. So, mm-hmm. right. and then it just kind of went from there. And then, so, and then I got on Alibaba and I'm researching different things because you up at night. Like, I'm at home, man. I'm the teacher. So we was at home, virtual. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and then, you know, for a while, it was just, you know, you just trying to kind of keep pushing the envelope and then, like, you know, it, it worked. You know what I mean? I'm just like, wow, like, okay. And then, you know, create some different things. Like, this is a unique hoodie. Um, mm-hmm. It's called the Passport Hoodie. Right. It, um, it has a, no. I travel a lot. So, <laughs> this is for your passport. Right, or it's for right. your license, uh, mm-hmm. whatever you whatever do. you could put in there. Uh, if you've ever mm-hmm. been on an airplane, you know, like, you hate going through your pockets. Yeah. You, right. you don't want to lose your keys. You don't want to lose your license. I mm-hmm. want that because I drop stuff out of my pocket yeah, all for, the time. Yeah, for like, you. Like, all the time. Just yeah, dude. Back yep. when you sit down and so, Where can we get those at though? Um, it's on my website. This one is from last year, but I'm actually about to put the Black History one up. Mm. Um, it's black and gold, um, and so um, it's definitely comfortable. Um, this pocket is for your cash or your credit cards. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you're on a plane, you 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 secure, you comfortable. You got your cell phone, you got your uh, ear pods that people always leave on the airplane. Yeah. <laughs> so, so like. You talked about your daughter, right? Mm-hmm. How, when did you become a father? I was 23, 24, I think. Um, my daughter was born like three weeks before I got my master's degree. Um, so I was just finishing up my master's. Um, you know, we was young parents. You know, we had to figure it out. You know, we had uh, support. Right. Um, we was in our 20s, so it wasn't super young. But at the same time, we were still trying to figure out our careers and our lives. And obviously, we still had a lot of room for growth. Um, and now we hear my daughter 20 now. She'll be 21 coming up in a couple months. We got this big trip wow. to Vegas for her 21st turn up mm-hmm. um, that I'm excited about. I think it's probably more my birthday than hers. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she's in college. She's in um, she's in college twice. She's in uh, school at U- UNC Charlotte. And then That's she's uh, in esthetician school, nail school. She, so she's try, have, uh, trying to follow her passion, too. So she's trying to figure out her thing, too. So, um, you know, yeah. it, it, it's... As a as a parent, it's it's tough, but it's fun, and I know, um, you know, you just want your kids to do well, man. You just want to see them do well and be happy and yeah. uh, get that quality of life. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But you know, I know the kids just want it fast, and it, it's not it's not fast. <laughs> what What would you say like are some things you instilled in your daughter that you've instilled in your students? Mm. Um, just work like hard work. Um, uh, you know what? The biggest thing is consistency. Right. You have to be consistent in what you do. Um, and if you consistently keep working on your craft, you will get better. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, integrity. Um, I, I, me, I really care about people. Mm-hmm. So I can't just do things to beat people. There's things I can do right now just to make money and make a lot of money. But I can't do them because something in me just says right. that's just not who you are. More and so me. that's just me. And, and, you know, I know other people who do it and... <laughs> More power to them, but I just can't. So I, me, I have a moral code. Am I super religious? No, I'm not super religious at all. But morally, I believe in being a good, being a good person. And so my goal is, you know, and hopefully that rubs off um, on the people around me. I want to talk about um, investing in entrepreneurship, mm-hmm. right? So as, as an entrepreneur, what do you think are some some no, some things you can throw out there for everybody listening to like, you know, what can they kind of do as a general you know, idea to get started on that kind of thing? From an investment standpoint, my, my, I honestly, and I wish I knew what I knew now, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? We, I'll be doing a lot, lot better. Um, but investing is a long-term thing. I think a lot of times when people think investing, they think of flipping mm-hmm. and it's right. not a flip. It's a, a long grind, and you got to have a goal. And if you set your goal, then it's easier to work toward it. Yeah, um, right. What I noticed, I talked to students today, and I'm like, what you want? And, you know, a high school student, I don't know. Like, what do you really want? You know, what's your goal? And once you create that goal, then you can create the, the system. There's tons of people who help you create the system to get to that goal. 
Right. You know what I mean? You want a big house, a mansion? Okay, so you got to mm-hmm. put the work in. Yeah. So now we can put the concrete details of what you need to do. Same thing with investing. So what I try to tell people is every two weeks when I get paid, I buy a little bit of stock, maybe mm-hmm. a little bit of Bitcoin. Um, I try to get some Apple now, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? But, you know, it depends on what you are and where you where you at. Yeah. For younger people, you're 18 now, so you can get mm-hmm. you a Robinhood account where you can buy fractions. Yeah. So every time you get paid every two weeks, even if it's $5, you can buy it for fraction. You keep doing that, and you do that for, for you 18 now. Imagine if you do that until you retire at 55, 62, or whatever it is. You know how much money you're going to have? A lot. <laughs> A lot. You know what I mean? And obviously that $5 is today, as you get it's better jobs, and you're going to put more and more. And what you start seeing is your account going. And now you bracing yourself. So now I said a goal. Okay, dang, my account hit that. I, I got to hit this, this time. Mm-hmm. And then I talked to a friend of mine, and he said, "Well, you know, I just invested X. I invested two hundred fifty thousand in this business." I'm like, "Oh man, how I, I how do I get to that point? You know what mm-hmm. I mean?" So now you kind of use the people around you as inspiration. So my goal, I would tell people every two weeks, you when you get paid, you gonna buy something dumb. You gonna go get mm-hmm. McDonald's. You gonna go buy a pair of sneakers. So. Right. You bought a pair of sneakers. Imagine if you bought, instead of buying those sneakers, imagine if you bought Night Stock. Mm-hmm. Jordan's release yeah. seemed like every week. <laughs> and some people get them every time. Wow. So imagine if they bought a Nike share every time they bought them Jordans. Mm-hmm. I want to press the entrepreneurship a little bit more. Mm-hmm. So I want to talk about, or I want to hear from you, mm-hmm. like some of those light bulb moments, mm-hmm. like this really worked and this really came together. And some of the difficulties you're going through to, you know, to where you are now. Planning. Um, you have to plan. I, I see a lot of people who start businesses and they just do it impulsively. And right. th- everything is a rush. Right. And usually the things just don't turn out well. You know what I mean? You really have to plan. You have to do your research. And you have to be committed to the work. A lot of people see it. They see somebody else do it, and, but they don't see what they do behind the scenes. And so you don't see the actual work. And then when it's time to get do the actual work, then they be like, nah, I don't like this no more. That's where the consistency come from. You know what I mean? What you see on camera, it, it they spent probably double or triple the time setting all this up. Mm-hmm. Right. Every time. You know what I mean? So people are like, I want a podcast. All right, so you got to set up the studio. Mm-hmm. You got to get here early. You leave late. You know what I mean? It ain't just right. going up on the mic and starting. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's a lot of work involved with everything you do, and you have to be willing to put the work in. So what I tell people to do is go intern, go follow somebody else, or go ask questions to somebody who does what you want to do. A lot of times you they will help you mm-hmm. if they know you're sincere, and then you can get an idea of what goes into what you're trying to do. I feel you. What would you say is, like, the hardest part of like being in like that restaurant bar business because like the old room is crazy, bruh. <laughs> and like you, I just feel like you is humble and you've been chilling, but like we need to get into crazy stories. Cause there's too much <laughs> businesses you involved in. That's like not the craziness lit is dealing with people, happening. man. You know what it is, man. Like, <clears throat> y'all y'all been in school, all, you know, Buffalo public schools is dealing with people. The kids act just like their parents. So you already know what goes on. <laughs> um, they don't got no money either. You sometimes, me? you know what I mean? Sometimes it's money. Sometimes it's not, you know, it depends on how you handle things. So oh, what I yeah, what you have fact. to do is you have to set your norms, your rules, and you have to stick to your rules and be consistent. Mm-hmm. So once you stick to your rules, then everybody else will say, okay. They'll try it, but right. if you stick to your rules, eventually they'll understand it and they appreciate it, as long as you fair. Mm-hmm. If right. you're not fair, I can't treat him <clears throat> better than I treat you mm-hmm. as a customer. Now, if we have a relationship, obviously I'm going to give you, you know, that's your boy. You know what I mean? But at the same time, my boy has to respect that I have a business. Yeah. My family has to respect that I have a business. You have to set those barriers. So it's a lot of those things. Um, the hardest part sometimes is is some people who don't understand those barriers. Mm-hmm. And they think just because of who they are, they're they supposed to get extra treatment or uh-huh. they, they you know, you got some wolves out here. And the mm-hmm. wolves will try to try you at any time. Right. And so you got to be able to still protect yourself but still be humble. So it's a balancing act, you know what I mean? So, um you ever like this is just like something funny i kind of thought you ever like had like taught a kid right and then like you go to your you go to the old room and then a parent come in there oh, right yeah. after you taught them a lot of parents i know like so you know when parent teacher conference come i know a lot of them parents so yeah. and it ain't Yo, that's crazy. <laughs> but one of the things 
what I used to hate with teachers is they used to hide who they were. I never hid who I was. So yeah. every student who will come in my classroom know that I own a restaurant. They parent, you know, and they'll go back, oh, he's such a, oh, that's, I know him. You know what I mean? So it's not like a, I don't try to hide what I do or who I am. Do I drink occasionally? Yes. I don't, I'm not a smoker. I never did drugs. So you ain't got to worry about that part from, from a school academic part. But uh-huh. yeah, I go out, get tipsy, me and my wife, go hang out, whatever. You know what I mean? Like I'm human. I do right. trips, you know what I mean? So I, I, we go places, we turn up, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, right. not going to tell everything, you know, some stuff you got to keep within your crew and your home and your friends mm-hmm. or whatever, you know what I mean? But at the same right. time, like, I never hid who I was and what I do. So when it's the parents come in or when the kids come in, when they become of age, it's respectable and it's cool, you know what I mean? It's not uncomfortable standing next to somebody who I was learning social studies with for from four years ago. That's it's not because I made it comfortable before, so... As a, I want to, as a teacher mm-hmm. and as a former school board member, mm-hmm. or I don't know if you still. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I was never on the school board. I want, like, what do you feel are the steps that teachers can take, and the parents can take to, you know, get the proper education or the kind of education that, you know, we want to, you know, boost society. You know, um, I'm gonna start with the parents. The parents got to put more emphasis into education, um, and not just having somebody else teach your kid. So preparing your kids for reading like they need to be able to read on level and that starts at home before they even start school you know um you see a lot of kids i see yeah, the, the, the 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 baby showers with jordans and all that stuff and mm-hmm. then some of those kids can't read when they get to kindergarten yeah. they don't know how to they don't know their name they don't know you know what i mean so it starts early as far as just making sure your kids have the basic fundamentals um and also man like just proper like manners like sometimes mm-hmm. just being nice goes a long way. Sometimes you just have a bad day, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And if I respect you, then I understand, okay, she having a bad day, let's, you know, let's let you relax or whatever. Mm-hmm. But if it's always rah, rah, and always I got to cuss you out every time I have a bad situation, oh, yeah. I'm right. not dealing with that person, you know what I mean? So a lot of times, man, th- th- that goes both ways. You know, from my experience, all teachers I know has been great teachers. I, I, it's rare that I've seen bad teachers. Yeah. Some of them out of, out of position ain't in the wrong spots because that's how they put them as far as the board and so on and so forth. But all, all right. the teachers are good. They really want the kids to learn. They want to help. But everybody don't come to school to learn. All right. You know what I mean? And so it has to be more of an emphasis. There's no reason why foreigners come here and have more. You go to a, uh, I, I remember going to the, uh, when I got to McKinley, it was the honor roll assembly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All the kids on the honor roll was foreign. 90, 98% of the school is African-American. So how are all the foreigners is on the honor roll? That's, That's because y'all don't care. And if you, it's hard to make, if you don't care, it's hard to make somebody else make you care. Mm-hmm. You know what right. I mean? So it starts at home. It's really the parents. You have to, not when your kid get in trouble, you have to be there, period, all the time. Not just when you, they steal your cell phone. You know, right. yeah. I see more parents when graduation time come up, and I've never seen these people in my life at the school. Parent-teacher conference, Every parent-teacher conference I had in the public, public school, I never had more than four parents show up, ever. Mm. And I've been teaching That's over 23 crazy. years. Wow. So you tell me where the problem at. Mm. It ain't the teachers. <laughs> more than four? Never. That's crazy. But anyways, like, so, okay. There is a there is certain problems with the teaching, but you did say you like the graphic design mm-hmm. teaching aspect. So you have, like, that's a... You're teaching that right now mm-hmm. at McKinley? Yes. Is that like an elective or it's like a... No, it's a career path. So, you know, uh, McKinley is a, a vocational school, so um, the, the career track is printing. Um, right. Obviously, the print industry is huge. This communication mm-hmm. industry is huge. There's so many different lanes in the graphic design, editing, and so on and so forth. So there's so, so many different lanes. But we got plumbing. We got holder culture. We got HVAC. So it's all these different programs at McKinley that you can go... And a lot of those programs, you can go right out of high school, especially like plumbing. You can literally go out of high school and you're making fifty, sixty thousand an hour. Mm. If you put the work in, a lot of them don't. Um, Carlos Wright, I don't know, you probably never heard the name, but Carlos Wright, he left McKinley. I think he worked for Roto Rooter for a year, and then he'd been on his own and is having own owned his own business for the last twenty something years. That's crazy. Anytime man. somebody in the hood need plumbing, yo, call Carlos. <laughs> And he come, take care of everything, and, you know what I mean? Like, he's his own boss, and he's been his own boss since high school. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it, there's no reason why the rest of the kids can't do that. 
Yeah. I, I don't think you ain't going no houses yet, but when you get to that house and you got a plumbing issue, <laughs> you need that joint fixed immediately. But like, I feel like an issue with that is a lot of pe like a lot of uh, like peers, mm -hmm. like my peers and stuff like that. They're not really as concerned about the future from like now though. Like they'll be concerned about it probably next year. Mm. But sometimes but like, next year, then that next year turns into the next year. It's just like yeah, feels yeah. like we gonna keep winning next year. Yeah. <laughs> I hate to say, you know, I gotta mm. use that uh, <laughs> my boys, but sorry, you sorry, well, uh, Steph Diggs. <laughs> 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 but you still have to have a goal. That's where I, right. I go back to the goal. Mm -hmm. Like so, you said, where are your inspiration? So I, I, I find a goal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I ask all the kids, like, yo, you want a nice house? Oh yeah, I want a nice house. How you gonna get the house? People don't be oh, I'm worried about it next year. How we get there? No, you got to start worrying about it now, so you mm -hmm. can work toward getting to the house, the car, and all that. Mm -hmm. And you have to have something to get it because you can get it. But how you gonna keep it? Right. Mm -hmm. Back to willing to work for it, being consistent. You have to work on that goal. And the problem, like what they don't realize is, you can work on that and still have fun. Mm -hmm. Right. You know what I mean? I was broke as I don't know what playing basketball. <laughs> still have fun. Got a chance to travel the country. You know what I mean? You know I me, mean? so but I was working on my long term goal. So with all your experiences, and we're gonna end off with this mm -hmm. for now. Uh, what is what would what would be just your general advice, like to us young people right now, like just going through life right now? Figure out what you want to do. The sooner mm -hmm. you figure out what you want to do, the, the sooner you can start working toward it. Right. Mm -hmm. And once you get good at whatever that skill is, you'll the money will come. But you have to figure out what you want to do. And, I, you know, a lot of times you ask young kids what they want to do, and they say, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And yeah, nah. it can't be that I don't know. It got to be something. It may change. That's fine. Yeah. But if it changes along the line, you still got all this experience in this fat, this, this career field. You know what I mean? Sure. So if I was a history teacher, imagine if I had stopped doing graphics. Would I have the, the dream job I have now? I wouldn't. No. Mm. So that experience wind up helping me. So now I use both my degrees. You know what I mean? It, it just works out. You know what I mean? So a lot of times, man, you have to figure out your what you want and then work toward it. It's easier. To me, it's easier that way for everything. You know, right. okay, I want the mansion. All right, the mansion costs 750000 All right, I got to find a job that makes whatever. I don't know. You ain't got to make seven fifty, but you know All what right. I mean? Maybe you got to make two fifty. All right, so I got to find a career path that right. you want to be in that'll pay that much. Mm. You know what I mean? And you got to go for it. And if you plan it out correctly and put the work in, you'll get it. No problem. Right. And you're young, so you got a lot of energy. Got it. <laughs> so up next, about to put you through what we call the hot seat. Let's get it. All right. So we're going to ask you uh, just general questions, mm -hmm. and you can only give us uh, just like a small answer. So mm -hmm. it going to be rapid fast. All right. Well, we'll see how fast I can do it. Okay. Uh, it's my first time leading the hot seat, so my let's see boy. how we do. So, first question. Favorite restaurant to eat in Buffalo? Hutch's. Hutch's. What's that? I never Hutch's been. is on the corner of Delavan and in uh, Delaware. What type of food they got? Uh, I guess it would be like fine dining. Mm, uh, right. Very good. Very great. Uh, great food. I mean, I got a lot of restaurants that I love, so. All right. Um, Pizza or wings? <laughs> I feel like I'm on drink champs and I'm supposed to drink now. Because <laughs> I don't know how you're going to choose that one, Matt. I'm going to have to go wings, though, just because, uh, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning, you had a couple of drinks, you ain't mm. going to get no pizza for the most part. Top five, <laughs> Top five wings, Bob. Uh, uh, Oak Room. <laughs> Oak Room? <Yeah>. Five times. <laughs> No, I, uh, oh, man, I don't want to yeah. tell my wing spots, uh, man. I don't want to tell my wing spots, man. Oh, then, nah. you know, yeah, there we go. There we go. Secret location. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I respect that. All right, tough like pizza, though. Give pizza, uh, pizza, um, the top three, top three, pizza. top three, bocce's, um, Picasso's, and the third one is one of my secret locations, so I can't uh, really, bro. What is a lot of good. Like, I, I, no, I haven't had Imperial, so I can't say that. Mm. I don't, I don't even know where that? Imperial is that. Where's, where's Imperial at? Abbott, right? Abbott. Yeah, Abbott. See, I ain't in my neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up, <laughs> your favorite sports team in general? The Bills. The Bills, amen. 
And LeBron, whatever team he's on. I, I ain't going to let that speak to <laughs> I, I ain't going to hold you on that one. But speaking of that, uh, I know i uh, got a special person in the room who probably get his feelings hurt, but we'll, we'll, I'll ask the question anyway. LeBron, Kobe, or Jordan? LeBron. Aww. You got to go. That's the, only, <laughs> that's the only correct answer, though. Mm-hmm. About the jam with this one, just because he answered that question that way. Who is your mom? Or some more uh, DJs in Buffalo? DJs, ooh, ah, uh, man, I gotta go with Hassan. That's my guy, you know, Cold yeah. Spray, School yeah, 74, sure. baby. Um, I'm gonna go with my guys, uh, Wire, who moved to Dallas, who's killing it. I'm gonna go with Jizzle, Iceberg, and I think I did spin. Did I just spin? You got spin on that now. Uh, yeah. So that's five right there. Right. I, I know I missed somebody, but I'm sorry. And, and I got to mention J. Rowe, man. J. Rowe is murdering it right now. Y'all <laughs> boys don't know about one of the best yeah. basketball players that ever touched the court in Buffalo and mm-hmm. turned to Went DJ. Oh, he did? And now he one of the top DJs, man. He, no, uh, he, he murders my parties all the time. So, right. That's um, what's up. And That's Spin good. is my road DJ. Anywhere we go in the country, Spin is with me. Well, if you had to pick an actor to portray you in a movie, who would it be? Ooh. That's a good one. Um, I'm a, I mean, Denzel too old now, but oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, that's uh probably was it Derek Luke? What's his name? Derek Luke, Biker Boys. Uh, uh, that's my Fisher. Derek. Yeah, yeah, he played Puffy. <laughs> yeah, uh, yep. yeah, yeah. So I would say Derek Luke. All right, I ain't even gonna pretend like I know who that is. You know his face. You never seen that movie, bro. You you would know his face if you seen him. Notorious. Mm. I never seen Notorious. Ah. Mm. Uh. All right, next up. Uh, you say you were a father, right? Mm-hmm. What is your, wait, you have a son? A daughter. Daughter? I got a daughter and I got a stepson with my wife. Okay, mm-hmm. nice, nice. So, like, what's the, like, like, through time as a parent, what has been, like, your most favorite thing to do with your children? Oh, well, well, my daughter, man, and obviously I spent more time with my daughter because obviously my daughter, um, mm-hmm. I just got married, I've been married five years. Mm-hmm. He's an adult, so he's, like, 23, 24, so, um, but with my daughter, my favorite thing to do is uh, probably travel. Like we like when we ever get to go to the amusement park, mm-hmm. um, right. you know, just going on a roller coaster, seeing her face, seeing her laughing, seeing her scared, going to movies with her, like when she scared. My daughter liked to shop, so, you know, that shopping experience, you know, even though it'd be hitting my pockets. But, you know, it's just, you know, just hanging with her. My daughter is real fun, like, you know, once she get going. So she got a good, you know, personality. So just hanging with my daughter, period. It's like, it's all that. You got five rappers. Top five mm-hmm. rappers, Jay Z, Scarface, um, Big, uh, Pac, and I need a fifth. I need a fifth. I need a fifth. Um, who do I like all the time? I don't know who my fifth is. I'm not a Nas fan. I, he's good though. He's good, but I'm not a Nas fan. Um, Nas go crazy. I, I don't, I'm trying to think who else. To, I'm trying to think of who like I always have to listen to, mm-hmm. and those is. Uh, the ones I'm trying to think. Uh, I don't know. You know what? I'm gonna go Benny. I'm gonna go Penny, Benny slash Conway because I have to listen to them. Mm-hmm. I have to. Yeah, they go crazy. You know what I mean? So, and I honestly like listening to their stuff more than anything now. So I really enjoy. I've seen the development too. Nah, them boys, so them boys I, been dropping hits. Yeah. Right rotation right now. Um, actually, you know, I've just been listening to a lot of older stuff right now. Like, uh, I, I played big. We just came from a ski trip, and I put big in, in the title, and then it just kept playing all the other random stuff around that era. So, um, and I hadn't listened to big in so long. So, um, but, you know, when the Griselda dropped, obviously, whatever they got going on. But I'm a um, Scarface fan. Um, I was a Ghetto Boy Scarface NWA fan. So right. that was my era. Scarface is probably him and Jay-Z. Them. They're my two favorite favorites. You know what I mean? So, Denzel or Will Smith? Denzel. Can't go. No. Can't. Denzel the GOAT. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Best QB in the league. <sighs> Come right. on. Mahomes, man. I hate to say it. Oh, no, oh, no man. All right, man. It, listen. It's too no. soon, man. It, nah, man. No. You said in the league right now, right? Yeah. 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 Right. Who else is better than him? I mean, Josh Allen. I think Josh is just as good, but Mahomes got that that ring, and then they've been in the thing four years in a row, about to go to probably go to Super Bowl yeah. three years in a row. So Always these rings, yeah. So. And then last yesterday, man, Josh played perfect too. Mm-hmm. 
But dude, Mahomes played perfect. Like he never made the mistake. Like we was trying to hope for one little mistake. He never made a mistake. He never threw a bad pass. I'm just like Jesus. Mm-hmm. So you, you got to give him his credit, man. You got to give him his due. That dude cold. But I'm excited for Josh because I felt like Josh. I felt like Josh reached another level uh, mm-hmm. the last three weeks. Th- that he really ascended, and I've just seen a confidence yeah. in his face, yeah, uh, in his eyes. But it, Mah- Mahomes already had that for a while, so mm-hmm. um, I feel like Josh is going to be special. But we still got to get over that hurdle. Yeah, you're right. I have no problem with that. Mm-hmm. Well, I do got a problem with Mahomes, <laughs> but anyway. I do too. But you know, it is what it is, man. You got to respect it. Yeah. Anyway, any final wisdom you want to give to us there in the audience before we have to take care? Oh, um, I want just people to be consistent, man. Like consistency in, in everything you do, whatever you you put your mind to, you have to be consistent. Um, you know, w- w- every time I go to do an event, when it first come out. Everybody, oh, I'm going, I'm going. And then it has a time where it dies down. And that's that time where a lot of people quit because mm-hmm. nobody's talking about it again. And it's like, that's that time where you got to put the work in. Right. Because then when that event come up the couple weeks before or the week before, now everybody back excited. But they're only excited if you continue to do the work. Mm-hmm. So whatever you do, it's going to go up, it's going to go down. That's business. January and February right now is the worst time to business. Especially in Buffalo. Why? Because mm-hmm. it's cold outside. Yeah. It's snow, man. You know what I mean? You don't feel like going nowhere. And so right now you should be preparing for March, April. So yeah. it's being consistent. All you know right. what I mean? And so that's everything you do. All right. Thank you very much. Or any anything else you guys want to yeah. add? I appreciate you that. dropping the jewels and you know, I like right. seeing listening, you know, stuff you got going on. So keep me pushing too. Definitely, mm-hmm. definitely, man. Appreciate nah, it, bro. You, you, you definitely inspired me on a level of just keep grinding. You feel me? And that's all I be trying to do is just grind, get up there with everything I got going on. So, yep. yeah, just keep I'm grinding. Here. Travel, man. Don't you know? Sometimes it's easier not to do nothing. Yeah, show. Sure. You know what I mean? So, yeah. don't take the easy way. Amen. Mm-hmm. Right, the last man. thing I, I do got one more. It's hard to be a bum and it's hard to be successful. So you can mm. pick your heart. <laughs> 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 Can't argue with that. <laughs> all right, well, that's all we have for today, guys. So, again, Dennis Wilson, got it right? All right. Yep, yep. Yeah, he, I, absolutely amazing guest. Uh, you're truly an uh, inspiration. Love the things you're doing in the community, and I hope you keep up your work on the, your on all your businesses <laughs> you're doing. <laughs> so, uh, thank you. We appreciate you for coming on. And we just want to give a quick shout-out to Say Yes Buffalo, and we also – I want to give a shout out to the Greater, yes. Greater Buffalo Equity Roundtable. Mouthful. So we want to thank them. Uh, give a little special thanks for the Bills for the season they gave us. We may didn't go to Super Bowl this year, but you know what? You can always dream. We got a whole decade ahead of us. So uh, that's, that's all. Show. Oh, yeah. You can also catch our podcast on YouTube, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Yep, Spotify. T- and yeah, Spotify Podcast. So. Please support our podcast and uh, hope you have a blessed day, everyone.